Here is a proof of Euler's formula without using Taylor series. Our key assumption in this proof is that the results of differential calculus, such as the product rule and chain rule, hold true for functions that involve complex numbers. So, on with the proof. The key step in this proof is to define a function relating these two quantities. f of x is equal to cosine x plus i times sine x times e to the negative i x. Next, we're going to find the derivative of this function. And, as usual in calculus, we're going to have to use the product rule. So the derivative of the first part is negative sine x plus i times cosine x times the second function, e to the negative i x, plus the first function, cosine x plus i sine x times the derivative of the second function which is negative i e to the negative i x. Now we'll want to simplify this, so we're going to try to factor out the e to the negative i x, and we'll be left with negative sine x plus i cosine x. Now distributing this negative i through these terms, we'll get a minus i cosine x, then negative i times i be negative negative 1. In other words, positive sine x. All of that times e to the negative i x. Notice that we have great cancellation inside the middle here. The sine x cancels with negative sine x. The negative i cosine x cancels with i cosine x, leaving us with 0. It's interesting. Remember, if the derivative of a function is 0, that means the original function, f of x, must be equal to a constant. Now the question is, what constant will this be equal to? Well, to find that out, let's actually evaluate the original function at a point. So f of 0 will be easy enough to do. It's going to be cosine 0 plus i times sine 0 times e the negative i times 0 to be equal to 1 plus i times 0 times, so e to the 0 is 1. In other words, this is equal to 1. Now, since f is equal to 1 for one value, and f of x was a constant, this implies that f of x is actually equal to 1 for all values of x. So f of x, as you might recall, is the function cosine x plus i times sine x times e to the negative i x. We now know that is always equal to 1. Now simplify this by multiplying both sides by e to the i x. Multiply by e to the i x. So multiplying both sides by this. And then, well, notice that e to the negative i x and e to the negative i x, those multiply to give you 1. So we are left with cosine x plus i sine x is equal to e to the i x. That completes the proof of Euler's formula.